So we're doing the online example number one, online 7.1. And before I even look at the numbers, I know that I'm going to use the following three pictures and equations to solve the problem. The first picture, which doesn't necessarily have to be a bell-shaped curve, it represents what we know about the population, namely what is this mu, what is the sigma, what's the sample size that we're going to take from that population, and that's going to lead to the x bar, or the sampling distribution of the mean. I shouldn't be, I should really write it down, sampling distribution of the mean. And by the way, I can put down that the population is called x to distinguish it from the x bar, which is the averages of, of x's. And the, x, the second picture will definitely be a bell-shaped curve because of the central limit theorem with the following three characteristics. First of all, it's character, it will be a bell-shaped curve. Its middle value called the average of the averages is going to be equal to the same number that we started with over here. And finally, the amount of spread from average to average, how variable are the averages that come out of this population, recognizing that every time you take another average, you get a slightly different answer, especially if you did a spinner assignment. The sigma of x bar, which is called the standard error of the mean, has this little formula, which is really the only new formula of chapter 7, sigma over n, and we talked about, you're supposed to write about why that formula makes sense. And eventually, we're going to go to a third and final picture that's going to help us get the percentages visually, and that's called the z diagram. So we have the x, the x bar, and the z, and the basic parameters of the z is equal to this. And we're going to go from this picture to this picture by means of the z transforming an x bar to a z by this formula. And we'll now, now we're ready to solve the problem. So in this particular example, Bob, I want me to pause while anybody have any questions about the basic framework of every single example in chapter 7. Well, this, for, to start out with, we're told the average in this case is doing, we're doing 7.1 part C. Oh, by the way, I should put out something else. On, so the question itself is how many X bars are either lower than some number, between some numbers, greater than some number, but it's basically a question about the X bars. That's going to be the structure of every single question. So the only question, what are the actual details that fill in this picture? In this particular example, we're told that the average is equal to 1.32. So I can put down a 1.32 over here. I can put down a 1.32 over here. And I can put down a 1.32 in the formula, because eventually we're going to subtract that 1.32. We're told that the sigma is equal to 0.04. Uh, well, who did this? Uh, David, where are you? Am I right? Okay. It's 0.04. So sigma is equal to 0.04, which indicates how much spread from that ideal number we're going to find for each individual, which means this will be a 0.04 eventually. And what's the sample size? The sample size is, does it say? What's the sample size here? No, four, is it really that small? Yeah. All right, the sample size is four, which is small, but still a sample size, which means it's going to be a square root of 4 over here, which means it's going to be 0.02, as you said correctly. And that number here will be 0.02. And finally, what's the question? How many x bars are in between 1.26 and 1.29? 1.26, And so the next step is to locate those numbers physically on the x bar picture, because you can see it visually, you have a much better chance of getting it right. So where's 1.29? If you take 1.3, this is 1.32. If you go to the right, that's 1.34, because 32 plus 2 is 134. My finger is at is roughly 1.34. If you go to the left point, how much is 1.32 minus 0.02? So where my finger is at right now is roughly 1.30. So where's 1.29? We've got to go another half of a unit, 0.01. So one point, this is 1.30, 1.29 is roughly around here. I would say 1.29 is roughly, and if anybody disagrees, we're not really dealing with the decimals as well as I can, um, please let me know. And where is 1.26? Well, we'll get to see. 1.30, 1.28, 1.26, so you get three of these across. So 1.26 is somewhere around here. And we want everything in between those two numbers, so with the, the piece that we're looking for is this piece over here. And if you remember that, if you take a full standard deviation, which is at 1.30, this chunk is 34% of the area, which means this chunk between my thumb and my 
guess index finger is 16%. Well, if this piece is 16%, what is this piece in the middle? 10%? So what, is it, what was David's answer? Six and a half, almost 7%. So I'm, based on my rough analysis, I would say his answer is probably right. Did you, is it right? Okay, so, so, so I'm just pointing out, by making a picture, you can sort of guess roughly what the right, right answer has to be. So the x bar, and so this, uh, this formula, of course, got to be used twice, because we're going to take the 1.29 and convert it to its corresponding z. Ew. 1.29 got to be converted to a corresponding z. I'm going to do some. And that's going to correspond to something. It got to be someplace in a comparable part of the picture, someplace around here. The 1.26 got to be converted to a corresponding z, will be someplace out here. And then we're going to you know, continue the calculations. So what is it, what's the formula? So the first is, we'll say 1.29, which is the x bar, converted to a z score of minus 1.32 over 0.2 comes out to minus 0.03 over minus 1.50. So this is minus 1, 1 and a half is around here. So minus 1.50 is the first z score that we need for our calculations. Then you do the same exact thing for the x bar minus mu over uh, mu of x bar over sigma of x bar for the 1.26 now. Again, I hope you realize this is essentially using chapter 6, which I keep claiming. If you know chapter 6, chapter 7 is the degrees. 1.32 is the still the ideal middle value. 0.02 is the very standard area of the mean. This comes out to minus 6 over 2, which is minus 3.00. Notice I'm taking it out to two decimal places because that's how the z-table works. So here's minus 1, here's minus 2, here's minus 3. So we're talking about a number a little bit towards the outside of the graph. And again, if you leave it like this, you're, you're, you're fine. But once you shade it in, the answer pops out at you, and it's much better than leaving it blank. And again, you have an opportunity to take an educated guess. When I said 10%, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it's more, less than 10%, like 8% or 7%, now that I saw the answer. Now, at this point, we're basically dealing with a typical example in Chapter 6. What is the area under the z-table between two numbers? Now, anybody recall, I mean, you did it correctly, but anybody else besides David recall, how do you, cal how do you calculate the area between two z-numbers? Well, uh, if you memorize a whole bunch of formulas, like there's a formula for if one is positive and one is negative, both are positive, both are negative, or you use the picture. The picture says you're going to get the area below 1.5, negative 1.5, which is everything to the left. Then you're going to get the area, which includes everything that we want plus the piece that we don't want. This is not filled in over here. Then we subtract out the area below minus 3. And by subtracting the big area minus the little area, the difference is the leftover that we want. So if you want a, a schematic diagram to how we're going to finish up the example, we're going to look up a z-score of minus 1.50. We're going to look up a z-score that corresponds to minus 3.00. Then we're going to take those two z-numbers and we're going to subtract the big one minus the little one, and the leftover is the answer to the question. So what's the z-score of minus 1.50? According to... Ooh, it's 0664. Is that what you're saying there? 84? What is it? 0 0.06... And again, I asked you to bring in the z-tables, folks. I tell what? 0668. And how much is the area below minus 3? Minus 3.00 is what number? It's got to be a really small number, like 0, .00 something. 1, 3. And if you subtract them, you're going to get 8 minus 3 is 5. 6 minus 1 is 5. 6 minus 0 is 6. 0 so 0.0655, which you can leave alone, and that's the answer to the question. That is, that is 